Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Hey everyone, it's Wendy K. Laidlaw here, and as always, I do hope that this message finds you well. I'm jumping on quickly today because I'm feeling a little bit charged. Um, I spoke to a lady briefly yesterday who managed to get past my gatekeepers, um, and I don't obviously normally uh, engage with many women out with my programs, and even with my programs now, many of my clients deal with uh, my coaches. But um, I spoke to this lady who uh, was very distressed. Uh, she'd been given information by her gynecologist that she needed to have a, a full, complete hysterectomy and um, and that if she didn't do it, then there would all these uh, situations would occur for her. Uh, well, the reason I'm jumping on is what really distresses me in the line of work that I do is the misinformation that so many women are given about hysterectomies. Firstly, um, just to remind those listeners who are new, my mother had a complete hysterectomy and was devastated afterwards. She was told that a hysterectomy would, inverted commas, cure everything and that she would just jump off the operating table and, and, and within a few weeks be bouncing around like a happy, healthy woman and have no further complications. That was not the case. My mother de actually developed um, endometriosis symptoms even after her uterus, ovaries and cervix and everything was removed. Um, she had all sorts of complications. If you haven't read The H Word by uh, Nora Covey, then I suggest that you do so. Her um, book is very, very um, moving and also very insightful about a hysterectomy that was performed in her uh, against her will, but all the subsequent complications that she had thereafter. Now, these things are not explained to women. What I tend to find is that women will reach out to us and to um, hysterectomy education resources and services charity which is run by uh, Nora Covey um, given completely frightening and misdirecting information at the end of the day you know you do require your uterus and your ovaries throughout the whole of your life whether you've had a baby or plan to have a baby or finished having babies your uterus is not just a baby bag you need your uterus and your ovaries because they produce certain hormones as you get older they help prevent things like osteoporosis, which is a thinning of the bones, and many, many other things. So um, this lady was told that if she didn't get her cyst removed, now she had a couple of cysts uh, on each ovary. And I just want to, want to state for the record, in my opinion, um, I used to be very, very prone to cysts. Again, if, you're, if you've listened to me for a while, you know that I had eight chocolate cysts that were put into remission. I had adenomyosis that was put into remission. I had endometriosis stage four that was put into remission. And the reason, again, I'm sharing this is um, there are people out there uh, stating that um, it can't be put into remission. Now, obviously, I'm not claiming that it's easy. It's not. It's, it's challenging. It takes at least 12 months. But it is so worth it to retain these very important organs. Now, just to put these organs into uh, con uh, into perspective, this is the equivalent of a man's genitalia. Can you imagine a man having all of his genitalia chopped off and removed? So your uterus and your ovaries are the equivalent of theirs. And it's very, very important, not only for the hormones and everything, but also for the structure the infrastructure of your uh, of your body it keeps the the bladder the sorry it keeps the bladder and the uh, intestines separate as well um, and then what i also hear and see a lot happening is women being told well we'll just remove the uterus but we'll retain the ovaries this seems to be a new thing and again what tends to happen is 
uh, very little if not no blood supply gets to the ovaries once the uterus has been removed and then the woman has to go back for a second surgery to have the ovaries removed or they just shrivel up and um and die of their own accord which is again devastating to women who have been misinformed now it's bad enough to be uh, told by somebody you're going to hopefully get advice from that you need to have this this surgical procedure but even worse when i hear women being told that if they don't have their uterus removed then they'll develop cancer again it's absolutely disgusting totally irresponsible misleading and a downright lie to state to women or even make claims like that to women. Now, women are historically been brought up through for generations, uh, certainly in the Western world, to, to, to be quiet, to sit and look pretty and, and not speak up. And the reason I'm charged about this particular topic is, as I say, my mother had a complete hysterectomy. She was never the same afterwards. She was devastated. She had a whole list of complications from the surgical procedures themselves. Let's not you know, sugarcoat this, if someone is opening you up and removing essential organs, it's the, it's the kind of the cause and effect situation. There are going to be other complications and other situations. And um, I also hear, or I've heard it as well through um, uh, other sources, that some women who have had a hysterectomy don't tell other women the truth because they feel so embittered themselves that they weren't told the truth. And, um, and, and anyway, it, it, it just really, really bothers me. But um, also on the other side, I know when I was under great pressure to have a hysterectomy and I didn't, I decided that I, I knew that it hadn't worked for my mother and all her endometrial symptoms came back after her uterus was removed, that I had to do something different. I certainly felt I was stuck between a rock and a hard place and that... Um, you know, I had to do something different. But I, you know, the doctors washed their hands of me. They, they told me that that just was not possible, that it was not possible to put the cysts into remission. I had eight chocolate cysts of varying size, that I had adenomyosis. And by that stage, they were saying, well, no, there's absolutely nothing you can do. You have to have it removed. And the same with endometriosis. Now, again, for those who've heard me for a while, you'll recall the story of uh, a lot of pressure that I was under to have a hysterectomy and this one gynecologist joked and said that there were, were competitions amongst the staff, amongst the surgeons, as to how many uteruses they had removed and that he notched it on his bedpost in inverted commas. Now it made my blood run cold, it made me feel very very sick that women's body parts could be viewed so comically and in such a competitive manner when the full impact of having any organ removed was not explained. Now as I say women are brought up historically to be sit uh, sit quiet and pretty and, and not to ask questions. If you are feeling under any form of pressure at all then you must take your time. You know slow is fast and that you cannot put a, a uterus and ovaries and cervix back in once they've been removed. Once they're removed, they're removed. Now, just because somebody, and again, I've done another podcast about this called Stranger in a White Coat, you go to somebody who's a complete stranger and they're uh, talking to you about removing certain body parts. It is your prerogative and your responsibility to take care of yourself and do full research before you make any form of decision. So that if you do make a decision, it's a fully informed decision. Ultimately, at the end of the day, as a woman, your organs are incredibly important, but sadly, so many organs, as in, as in uteruses and wombs, are removed uh, very, very quickly and to devastating effect. Now, um, there's a, another book as well that I recommend if you are feeling lots of pressure. It's called The Hysterectomy Hoax, uh, the truth about why many hysterectomies are unnecessary and how to avoid them. Now, it's in its third edition. It's written by a Dr. Stanley West in America. Um, he states that while more than, and I think this number that he wrote, he did his third edition in 2002, so that's 20 years ago now, um, and I know the figures to be almost like I think 800,000 hysterectomies performed in America, if it's probably even more than that now. He said about 90% of them are unwarranted. You know, this, so it's in, essential that you read as much as you can. Obviously, read my book, but you need to empower yourself 
before making any of these absolutely critical decisions. Um, he states here, surgery can often do more harm than good and may pose needless risks, especially in situations involving life-threatening illnesses. Uh, surgeons often rely on hysterectomies as a panacea for everything from premenstrual syndrome to uterine fibroids. So it's very, very important and, and, and you know, I, it, it distresses me that women are, are, are told uh, misinformation uh, for the wrong reasons. Now, obviously, um, I was deli- I read this book when I was under a lot of pressure. I was so thankful to have this book by somebody who he actually deals um, in fertility and reproduction and things like that. So he his his uh, essence and his focus is very different to to other gynecologists. Um, obstetrics is is what his focus in. But I read his book at the time and I was so delighted to read that somebody uh, in that field was uh, stating alarm to the high number of women that are having these procedures that are not required and how they're outdated and how we can send men to the moon and we can send women to the moon and right up into space. But women are still having um, essential body parts removed when it's not required is is just ridiculous. Um, Equally, uh, Dr. Sarah Myhill, who is very, very popular and famous in the UK, has written multiple books. She's taken, she uh, was on my End of Boss Coach training um, as a special guest recently. And again, she uh, shared how she'd taken a terminally ill patient with cancer and put that into remission. So the reason I do what I do is I remember how frightening, scared and devastated I was with the information I was being given. I was going to complete strangers in a white coat. I was scared to question them because some of them were were, uh, not warm in me asking questions. And equally, everybody around me was was, uh, insinuating that this would be a quick fix to a long term problem. Now, as I say, I feel very lucky because I was supported uh, by Nora Covey. Um, who created this hers uh, charity called Hysterectomy Education Resources and Services? I read these kind of books, and I was reminded that the, this isn't. If you have endometriosis, the denomyosis, cysts, or fibroids, it's an opportunity. These things have shown up in your body because it's an opportunity for change. Now, change. You know, we seek change and we fear change in equal measure. But these conditions and diseases have shown up to get your attention your body wants to get your attention for a particular reason and this is why I do what I do now I would say about 90% of women get remission just from following what's in my book and obviously you know listening to my podcast and and even doing things like my my 21 day challenge and others say 10 20% perhaps need more support and everything and there is and my end of boss 12 months uh, academy client academy is opening up in a few weeks time so do pay attention to that but um, don't don't be swayed by a complete stranger frightening you into taking action. It's really important that whatever decision you make, you make fully informed. You take your time. It goes without saying that you use your pen and your paper. You journal. You hear your fears and your anxieties. Do not feel pressured by by family or parents or partners to go and have these important organs removed, you know, reflect back to them. How would they feel, you know, to have their genitalia removed? This is very, very important for your long term health. You don't want to jump from the chip pan into the fire. But equally, I want to reassure you today that if I can come back from putting my adenomyosis, endometriosis, cysts, mitochondrial dysfunction, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, all these conditions that I was told that I was going to be stuck with for life, if I can put them into remission, I know you can too. So that is my thought for the day. Uh, Do go inform yourself. Don't allow yourself to be frightened by people. Uh, Surgery is a very invasive procedure. Um, Again, we um, sadly hear horror stories every day of surgeries that have gone wrong, you know, the slip of a hand, uh, robotic arms. I mean, oh my goodness, stay away from those things and and take the, the route that is natural. Yes, it might feel that it's, you know, parts of you are frustrated because you can't take a magic pill or do a magic dance and it all be gone. It's going to take time, but it's equally a wonderful opportunity to really stop, sit by the roadside, pay attention, journal, 
This is why I'm doing this retreat in a couple of weeks time as well, to allow you to come away from your everyday, to come and be in a really safe, nurturing, resting, reviving place, and really to connect with your inner instincts, your intuition, and your deep emotions, and dare I say, even your higher power. So as always, take care of yourself, and until we speak again, to your health. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.